Hey, good, good evening. Welcome to our devotions for today, uh, Monday, June 7th. Uh, as you see, I'm home and I'm live. Uh, I had intended to tape at church today and post it later, but I had left my tripod at home and I just didn't want to hold, hold my phone up. And that was that's okay because it was a pretty busy day at church getting ready for next week, and then uh, had some visitors, had some church people. Dennis and Mark and Carol came and worked the whole day to clean up the uh, weeds and landscaping, and they, oh, it just looks. Fantastic, getting it ready for the reception for Lisa and I on Sunday. And there's Carol and Mark right there. So we, uh, so yeah, we I went out to eat uh, lunch with them at the Harry's in Ohio. And of course, you know, when you have a lunch with retired people, <laughs> Uh, it takes a long time because they don't have to get anywhere. So. But that's okay. I enjoyed it. Great conversation. And we even uh, ran into uh, uh, Mark's uh, niece, uh, uh, who was a bartender waitress. And now there's Aaron and Donna and Dennis. So. Anyway, so yeah, we spent quite a long time at, at lunch today, and uh, so I really didn't get around to taping, which is fine. Like I said, I left my uh, left my tripod at home. We've kind of shifted a little bit. I'm in the sunroom. You probably recognize this picture. It's like a Tuscan picture or from Provence, uh, France, and it just didn't go with my orange, <laughs> those uh, bright red and gold colors, so I moved over so as not to be distracting, to not to be so loud. It's a little more plain, but uh, that's okay. So... Yeah, so it was a good day. I hope you had a good day. We had some rain, uh, but it wasn't severe. So uh, I think uh, I think we're supposed to get rain tomorrow too. Our devotion for today, uh, they're quoting Revelation 7.14. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And the hymn is... Holy, 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 I think that's number 14 in our red book, but Aaron always keeps track of that, right? She'll let me know if uh, if that's the wrong one. I think I put the wrong number up when we sang it a couple of weeks ago at Holy Trinity Sunday, but uh, it's a hymn we know. We know well. There was a guy in my diaconia class uh Oh, whatever that was. He wasn't any older than me, I don't think. I must have been around 50 at the time. But uh, he was in the second year class, so I was in my second year. He was in the first year. Or the, and, uh, yeah, that didn't make sense, but, yeah. They were put together, you know, two classes, and you had year A and year B, kind of like we do in confirmation and so myself and uh, three or four other women were in uh, the, the older uh, class. There was probably about 10 in the uh, class that came in in the second year. And this guy came from the, I think he was from the Augustana Synod. And the Augustana Synod, as I understood, was very traditional, very staunch conservative 
And he was, in fact, he would cry when he'd talk about the Augustana Synod and how they should have never joined, I think, the American Lutheran Church. That was even before the merger with the ELCA. How he remembers that, I don't know. But uh, anyways, he, he was saying that every single Sunday, oh, hi, Sharifs, every, every single Sunday, they would sing holy, holy, holy as a uh, opening hymn. Now, I like the hymn, but that would get a little old, I guess. Maybe, but maybe not if you're doing sung liturgy. Oh, 473 there. I knew you'd, I knew you'd find the right number for me. Thank you. Uh, you know, if we're doing liturgy like the Kyrie and uh, the Gloria and those things. You sing that every Sunday too. And we, of course, sing our uh, Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful or Create in Me a Clean Heart and those things. So I guess that's no different than doing that. But uh, they would sing Holy, Holy, Holy every single Sunday. Now, we know about holy, holy, holy. I, uh, a couple weeks ago, I had a uh, children's sermon. I think about the altar and you know, if we had the pup, pulpit or whatever, but uh, uh, the altar, especially in uh, Nolan, drew an altar with holy, holy, holy written across it which is what our altar had. I didn't put that on my picture, but he knew that. He remembers that. Uh, holy, holy, holy. Where does that come from? You know, we have the Sanctus, holy, 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 Lord God. Uh, Heaven are for fully glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. But also, we had this reading not too long ago, Holy, 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 from Isaiah chapter 6, when Isaiah was lifted up into heaven, and he's seen God, or at least he's seen uh, where the room where God and the throne was, and God's robe, the train of his robe, just the bottom of his robe, filled the room, and the angels were flying back and forth, singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And he felt small. He felt sinful. He felt unworthy to be in such a great presence. And also, we have John of Potmos. John, maybe John the Evangelist, John the Apostle who was on the island of Patmos when he wrote the book of Revelation. Revelation, not revelations. Please, it's not plural. It is one revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of all the earth. Remember that. And there's often in Revelation, the angels are singing, holy, 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 that three uh, holies in a row. But what will heaven be like when we get there? Do we know what it will be really like? And I don't think you and I can fathom what heaven will be like. We have those descriptions uh, from Isaiah and Paul. We'll talk about Paul's description a little bit later and John's description. But that was kind of uh, kind of poetic. What will heaven be like? There have been some people who have had near-death experiences who have been brought into heaven and have got a glimpse of like Isaiah and Paul and John. And what they say is it is 
indescribable. They can't describe it. Words cannot say what heaven will be like, the beauty, the awe, the splendor, and the peaceful feeling of being there. Paul writes at the end of our devotion from 1 Corinthians 2.9, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. Yes, our eyes have never seen anything so beautiful. Our ears have never heard such wonderful, great music. Our minds have not imagined anything as great as what God has in store for those who put their cry, trust in his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's pray. Eternal God, I long to see you face to face, along with all who live forever in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray Luther's evening prayer before we uh, leave. Uh, tomorrow there will be a devotion. I'm not sure what time. We've got our, our Bible studies. Uh, I don't know whether I'm going to go live before the second one, right at supper time, or uh, it's probably going to last long. So it might, I think I might go live from home, and it might be quarter after nine or 20 after nine or so. So hang in there. Don't go to bed early. We're going to be together at some point. But it might be on already. You might see it as a pre-recorded one. But I do like to do uh, devotions from somewhere in the church. So it might be there. We'll just take it uh, what happens tomorrow. Let the Spirit move me. Let's pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Great to be with you tonight. We will see you tomorrow if you can. Uh, and uh, remember... Until then, that God loves you, and so do I. Good night.